Lift your hands in this place. Just wave your hands to the King of glory. We've seen an incredible demonstration of the power of God to go to the nations and the presence of the Lord is our key responsibility to stand before his presence. Lift your hands in this place and worship, 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 worship him. Thank you for your glory. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your presence. Just lift your hands a few seconds. It's a sound of shofar. One more time, I'm going to sound it. And those of you who feel led, the Bible says they shout it. For what we have saw tonight and what is about to take place in this place in the Holy Ghost. One more time. And when I blow it, if you can, shout. First of all, give an honor to God, who is the head of my life, and to our esteemed Bishop Charles Blake, our presiding bishop. Can we give a hand for him? Thank you, sir. God bless you. To Bishop P.A. Brooks, our first presiding bishop. God bless you, sir. To our general board members that are here today, God bless you. And to our chairman of our bishop's board, who is not here at this time, we give honor and praise to the Lord for him. To our leaders of this place, to Mother Rivers, to our First Lady, Mother May Blake. To the great people of God, to our father of missions, Bishop Carlos Moody, can we say amen? Praise God. To my bishop, and friend to Bishop Vincent Matthews, who is a tremendous leader and a great man to follow. Can you give him a hand? <laughs> to the great people of God from all over the country and all over the world, we thank God for you today. As you can see, I'm a bit nervous. I got about four minutes. I'm going to do it as fast as I can. I'm so thankful for my wife somewhere here from the Philippines. Sister Amy is there somewhere. God bless her. There she is. God bless you, baby. So thankful for the presence of the Lord in this place today. And I did want to make mention of one thing. I work with 12 tribes of the American Indians in America. One of the largest tribes, which is the Sioux Nations. One of our men, he had a call on the phone about a year ago. And when he answered the phone, the gentleman said, Bishop, this is the great, great grandson of General Custer. I see that you are Okalala Sioux and that you've started a ministry down in North and South Dakota. He called to tell him that he's a born again Christian. And for the past two years, Bishop, 
he's been sending a donation to support his ministry. Total Native American. I was honored by the tribe, one of the largest tribes in North Dakota, one of the richest tribes, by the way, now, because of the oil. They honored me as one of the leaders of their tribe. What we do not know, and I want to just share just for a moment, that from a world published on missions, the American Indian is the most unriched people groups in the world. One of the largest uh, suicide rates in the world. God has opened up the doors for us to reach them, and I believe that next year we'll have a large delegation to bring to this convocation. Thank you, Bishop Matthews, for trusting and believing in me to be a part of your life. I thank God for you. You're an awesome man to follow and to be part of ministry. I want to take the next few moments just to talk about the word mandated. Look at somebody say mandated. Not predated, not backdated, not postdated, and thank God it's not outdated. But I want to talk about mandated. The Bible tells us that God has a mandate. And the scriptures are clear concerning the mandate. I'm almost finished. An official order is the word mandate or commission to do something. The authority to carry out a policy or course of action. Regarded as or be given to that one might carry out the mandate. To give authority to a certain way. Assign territory under a mandate is essential. Mandated. Three scriptures and I'm done. In the book of Kings, 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 8, it's a strange scripture, but it says simply this, and he answered him, I am, go tell my Lord, behold, Elijah is here. Look at somebody and say, mandated. Mandated has man, human being, and it has a date, which is a timeline. It is our responsibility to understand the signs of the time. The signs of the time has spoken to us tonight. Need I say more? Because the videos and the presentation have already demonstrated what God is doing in this great church. The scripture here that I chose is a scripture that says that when Ahab had done the wicked thing and the people of Israel had backing up and been uh, in a backslidden condition, that God spoke to a nobody or somebody that he thought was somebody. Touch your neighbor and say, you are somebody. That sometimes people thought you wasn't nobody. And the scriptures tell us that Elijah was chosen by God. And so you know the story. He goes and he finally gets to where he's supposed to be. God is about to launch his miracle power. And the scriptures tell us that Obadiah saw him who was one of the men who had been hiding the prophets and protecting the ministry. Is there anybody here that loved the ministry? Let me see your hand in this place. You love God. You love what God is doing. You love what God is saying. You love what God is working out in your life. And so the Bible says that this conversation, one simple scripture, this conversation says that he said, go back and tell Ahab, I'm here. Touch your neighbor and say, are you here? Are you here for what we're doing? Are you here in the vision? Are you here for what God is speaking in this place tonight? Touch your neighbor and say, mandated. Scripture number two, Matthew chapter 27, verse 18. For he knew that for envy they had delivered him the gospel mandate. This talks about Jesus. He recognized that there was no real reason why they had accused him of what he'd done. But he understood his assignment. Somebody say assignment. 
His assignment was to come and to give his life so that souls might be saved. The whole purpose of us being here tonight is because God has given us a mandate to reach the, preach the gospel to the whole world. And the whole world is a key. I'm privileged and blessed that I've been to 51 countries. I know many have been to more than that. But I'm thankful for a farm boy that used to plow behind a mule. Bishop McKinney, I used to plow behind a mule. Hallelujah. And I used to say, gee and ha. Come on, say hallelujah. And so God had a mercy. My father left when I was a little boy. And God opened up a door for me to be raised. Amen. In a Christian home with my grandfather and grandmother and my mom, who is now 92. Too. But one thing that was amazing, that when I was a little boy and we sat on the porch there in North Carolina in the tobacco field sticks, and I sat on the porch and we lived near an airport, and every day I would see the airplanes take off and, and they would have the wheels go up and when they would land the wheels would come down. And I was eight years old sitting out on that old porch and I said, one day I'm going to fly on airplanes and I'm going to travel the whole world. You never know who's sitting beside you today that has a mandate from God. Shout hallelujah. I'm almost done because the Holy Ghost does the work. And so I recognize that when I've traveled in and out of these countries, and when I've traveled to Liberia and into China, when I've traveled in the countries, amen, that we weren't supposed to go, God opened up a door for my life and he showed me that I had a gospel ministry to preach. At the age of eight, I stood out by a tree in our backyard, amen. And that day, my brother and I was to play outside, but I never knew that when I heard the voice say Michael what you doing I said where are you Arnold that was my brother and he said and, and, and he didn't answer and I said I looked under the house and all I saw was some chickens under the house and I ran behind the back and wasn't out there but the dogs and I said I went back to play it and I heard a voice again said Michael look at your neighbor and say mandated I heard say, Michael, I said, all right, Arnold, you better stop playing games. So I ran a little bit farther out of the yard to try to find my brother. And the third time the voice said, Michael, I ran into the house and I said, Mama, where is my brother? He's playing tricks on me. She said, he ain't here. He left early this morning. I said, no, he couldn't have, Mama. Somebody's calling my name. And my mother had her apron on. She was an old country girl. And she had her apron on. And she began to cry and take the bottom of that apron and do like that. I said, Mama, what did I say? What did I do? She said, my God, your grandfather was a preacher. Now God's calling you to preach the gospel. Lift your hands if you know that you are mandated by God. Wave your hands and shout hallelujah. You're mandated to heal. You're mandated to cast out devil. You're mandated to reach the gospel. You're mandated to give. And most of all, you're mandated to be washed in the blood. Somebody shout glory. glory. Last scripture, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 18. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of your calling and what the riches of his glory is in the inheritance of you who are the saints. You are mandated to stand. You are mandated to be healed. I close with this story. When we was in Uganda some 30 years ago and Idi Amin had ravished the country and we went about 13 of us and we stood there to get into the gates and, and the soldiers had machine guns and, and they said to us if you get into this country you will pay us $100 a head at that time that was a lot of money we had just crossed from Kenya we came through Kenya to drive in trucks to go into Uganda to preach the gospel to take medical supplies and so we had to pay the money to get into the country but when we got into the country they took us in this huge field and when we began to preach the gospel that was a close to 3,000 people there. And when we preached the gospel, it was time to pray for those that wanted to be saved and healed. But all of a sudden, something miraculous took place. And I said to the interpreter, what is happening here? It seems that the crowd has doubled. Lift your hands and say, mandated. And so when he said, he said, you're right. The Muslims have come from behind the bushes. They've come from behind the buildings. And they've jumped in line. I said, why? 
I talked about an altar call. He said, yes, but you preached about healing the sick, casting out devils, people who've been sick. Lift your hands and shout, mandate Not post-dated, not outdated, but updated and mandated. So we got ready to pray, and they put a 1,000 people in each one of our lines. It was 5,000 people. The only problem we had is that people thought if they got in three lines, they got three blessings, and we have to have somebody to patrol the lines. And so we prayed for more than two hours for a 1,000 people. But this lady came in line. I close with this. She came in line, and she had this baby, this three-year-old child that was huge, and the child, she had it covered with a blanket. And I said, what is it? Do you want to receive Jesus? And she whispered to the interpreter, I'm a Muslim. I don't want to receive Jesus. And so I almost got an attitude. When you are called by God, you can't have no attitude. You got to have, you can't have no bad attitude. You got to have altitude. You got to know how to reach God. Lift your hand and say, I am mandated. My hands are mandated. My feet are mandated. My mind is mandated. My soul is mandated. I'm mandated. I need about 50 of you to jump up and say, I know I'm mandated. Come on, somebody say hallelujah. Tell him thank you, Lord. So she came and standing in the line. Hallelujah. And, and I lifted up my hands. God said, pray for her anyway. So I said, what is it, lady? She pulled the blanket back. The child's leg was twisted. The foot was curled up. Hallelujah. Like it was paralyzed. And I heard the Lord say, I mandated you. You came too far. You had to pay $100 to get in here. Come on, say hallelujah. This ain't no time to play. Ain't no time to shake. Ain't no time to fake. It's time to work in the fields of God. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. God said pray for the harvest. I'm praying right now. Is God calling you? Is he talking to you? Maybe he's talking to you. Maybe he's talking to you. Yes, somebody say yes. And so the woman stood there. And the Lord said, pray. So I lifted my hands. My knees was knocking. I'm praying. I said, Father, in the name. How many know there's power in Jesus? And before I could say Jesus, I heard bones cracking. I heard the, the legs cracking. And I looked, and the foot started uncurling in front of me. The foot straightened out. And the woman dropped the baby on the ground. The baby was laying there screaming. And the Lord said, ask her. Do she want Jesus? Bishop G. Fells said, yes, I want Jesus. When you are mandated, you've got power. When you are mandated, you've got joy. When you're mandated, you've got his presence. When you're mandated, he said, I'll go with you. I will not leave you by yourself. Lift your hands in here. I'm finished. Father, we thank you. Yes, Lord. Before I came tonight, I saw an angel like swoop through my room and he said one word I want to say to the people. What is it, Lord? He said, swiftly. That's it. Swiftly. Lift your hands in this place. Father, we thank you. For the glory of God. If I can do this quickly, that's about 50, 60, 70, 80 of you that are in this place. Lift your hands where you are to be what God wants you to be. Father, we thank you for the mandate. Lift your hands, everybody in here. I'm done. I'm going to count to three and I'm going to show you something in this room. It's so much power. Thank you, Bishop Blake. Thank you, sir. There's so much power in this church. And God is unleashing the power in this season. When I count to three, I want you to shout as loud as you can, Jesus, and hold it. While you're shouting it, I want you to lay your hands on somebody and watch what happens in here. I'm going to tell you. When I count to three, you shout as loud as you can. While you're shouting with everything in you, lay your hands and watch what God will do. He already knows it's in their heart. One, two, three. Jesus! 